world's largest button assortment, games, toys, and more. Formula 350 Collectibles. Dumpsterware.com. Go buy some merch. Warning, the following podcast contains adult language, adult situations, and lots and lots and lots of sexual innuendos. Viewer discretion is advised. Yes. Yeah, I wouldn't let any kid listen to this fucking garbage. Jesus Christ. Welcome to uh, uh, Gassy Radio, your home for gaming, anime, superhero news, and entertainment. Waft in and listen. Here are your hosts, Randy and Luigi. Uh, excuse me. Welcome to a brand new episode of Gassy Radio, the fucking week after St. Louis Comic Con Co. Teardrop and more are coming later in the entertainment section. Kermit, how are you doing? Why are you asking me this? I'm busy. Alright. Tommy, how you doing? Alright. Uh, waiting. You said, you know, you got a bunch of shit to open up for unboxing and it's not happening yet. We'll get to it. Uh, Luigi, how have you been? Uh, Wait, did I'm you wait. even announce yourself? Announce yourself? No. Did Luigi I announce Bonanno. myself? Yeah, I, 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 I I'm Randy been, Beasley? And I'm Luigi Bonanno. This is really weird. Basically. Yes, I don't fucking... And, uh, I By the way, my we, tailbone a couple weeks ago, but other than that, I'm, I'm doing alright. I'm doing good. Uh, I'm going to try this this vape flavor now. I said I'm going to cough, so here I go. Yep. Is that pink lemonade? Yep. I got it! Yeah. Yay! <laughs> I, didn't cough. You didn't cough. I almost did, though. You almost so. did. That's good. Anyway, let's uh, move on to the <laughs> the, ga- the gaming section. No, I really did almost cough. When you're feeling low and you want to shoot someone in the face, it's the gaming section. Because you can't do it in real life, we're gonna go to jail. And welcome to the gaming section. Didn't I use the voice this one? Yeah, we don't have any proper voices right now. We were trying to get them animated, so... Yeah. Anyway, we're in the gaming section. Uh, you see the trailer? There's still some fallout from E3 in here. The trailer for Detroit? No, I haven't. It's essentially Grand Theft Auto meets Siphon Filter in Detroit with Open World. That's dope. I mean, I don't think we've had any games in Detroit or like a mock-up Detroit or no. Chicago yet, really. Oh, no, there was Watch Dogs. Wasn't that Chicago? That was Chicago. Right, so... But no Detroit lately. So, represent. Let's get some fucking games okay, up on there. Uh, Pokemon Go's Chicago event, because now they actually are doing the gyms and the legendary Pokemon for the raid battles and shit now, sold out within 30 minutes. What? There was an event, a Pokemon Go-sponsored real-life event in Chicago to get the first uh, legendary Pokemon... And it sold out. Because all the gyms right now are closed down because they're adding raid features to them. All, every single gym is gray right now. What do you now. mean it sold out? This is a paid event? Yes. You had to pay. It was like $15 a ticket. What Sold out fuck? in 30 minutes. So now um, no one in the Pokemon Go Rockford area group got a ticket. No one knew about it. It came up. Like, everyone got the notification on the game uh-huh. and from the area. And it was sold out. So, like, no one from Chicago... It was, like, people from that weren't in Chicago are going to Chicago for the event. But, like, in the surrounding areas, only, like, Houston, uh, Manhattan, only, like, five big cities got the first event. But pe- the, the people around Chicago, like, the states around here, they bought, like, the event sold out, and it's not even all Chicago or yeah, Illinois people. That they're selling tickets for this shit. Yeah, it is, because now it's like, oh, we are paying for... <coughs> you are paying for Legendary Pokemon, then. No, no, you're you're not paying for legendary Pokemon. You're paying for the chance at a legendary Pokemon. Right, because only one person... I'm eating a mint, so... <laughs> um, only one fucking person from the raids gets that Pokemon. Exactly. So, and no one knows how it works yet. Is it whoever does the most damage? No one knows how it works. So, who the, exactly. no one knows how the, who the fuck's going to get the Pokemon. So, yeah, it's cool that I'm eating a mint and they're bringing legendary Pokemon in, but it's also not fucking cool that... Not everyone's guaranteed one. No, it's fucked up. Um, just <laughs> mm, good shit. Atari is bringing back the funk. I don't know why I wrote that. All right. With a new system, a, wo- really? a new fucking wood mahogany, mahogany video game system. I don't know what the fuck they're gonna release that compete with the Xbox, whatever the fuck it's called, the new Xbox X or One S or whatever the fuck. Xbox One X. What? <laughs> Mahogany. Mahogany. That's a Dragon Ball of Bridge reference. When Goku first dies, you know, the fucking King Yama's like, 
this desk is made out of fucking demonic, and he's like, blah, 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 and then he's like, and a mahogany. <laughs> mahogany. Um, anyway, uh, you probably saw this, I shared it on Gassy, um, to make up for all the bullshit, they gave us a any the NES Purple Jason on Friday the 13th, the game, with all the music for free. No shit. It's fucking awesome. The legitimate theme song from the NES game is in there. Um, he has kills that are shitty like the... It's fucking cool. I'm glad they did something for us. Because honestly, the first like week and a half, I couldn't play. Two weeks. Two yeah. weeks. That kind of sucked, but whatever. Um, New Injustice 2 Sub-Zero gameplay came out. Pretty cool. Um, I wish his, he was a little more animated. Like He's just generic like talking phrase A. Like, I'm here to stop you. And Batman's like, who is it under the mask? And he's like, I'm from the Lin Kuei. And Batman's like, that's a new one. It's fucking stupid. I don't know. Um, it, I, I enjoyed like when they introduced the horror characters in Mortal Kombat X and Mortal Kombat XL. That was neat. But like, I don't know how I feel. I mean, I get they do that because they actually... In another universe, DC and Mortal Kombat characters have crossed over. Yeah. I don't know. It's their, it's their fucking studio. They can do what they want. Yeah, I mean, I, I like the fact that they add them into Injustice all the time. That's a good one. That's, that's fun. Um, Pokemon Shining Cards. It's like Shiny Charizard. There's only a few. I have Shining Charizard. I have Shining Mew. And another one, but there's only like 12 throughout all the years. There's only been 12. They are re-releasing them later this year. Oh, I only have the Mew, Charizard, Ho-Oh, and some other one. They're being reintroduced this year, and it's a 65-card thing. I just completed the XY Evolutions and the Generations. They're doing that again, but all the fucking secret rares are reprints of the shiny cards. Um, they won't be as worth... They're still going to be worth a lot of money, but not clearly not as much as the original. Right. Um, and there hasn't been word yet if their attacks have been updated, like how the OG Charizard was reintroduced in Generations and shit, yeah. and XY Evolutions. There's no word on that yet, but I assume they're doing the same thing. So it's cool. It's a good way to get all of them, but it's not the same. Right. Um. <laughs> fuck. Um, Dying Light, one of my favorite zombie games in a long time, is getting more free DLC. And I didn't. I wouldn't have sold it if I knew it was getting DLC in the first place. Like Doom, keeps getting more and more DLC, and I still play it once in a while now. But like, I just bought like all the DLC like to catch up and play with a couple of my buddies who's the, who are. But they have now they have the next DLC because I haven't played in like two weeks now, and I'm like I'm not dropping another fucking twenty dollars right now right. to fucking play more Doom. Like at this point. I don't know, Doom's not getting boring, it's just the game is getting boring. It's like Friday the That's 13th, I only play a little bit of Friday the 13th because in the end of the day, it's either an extreme game of hide-and-seek or you're a murderer. And it's really, like, I was lucky the third time, the first and third time to play, I got picked as Jason. But you gotta be careful. You'll over-fucking-run like you're put, like, we played so much Pokemon Red and Blue waiting for Sun and Moon... When Sun and Moon came out, we played for like two weeks, and we were like, "Oh God, <laughs> it's yeah, the same, really, I'm done. it's the same fucking shit." Yeah, it is. Um, <laughs> there is a dodgeball charity event for all maids going on. Dodgeball is a game, so it's in the gaming section. Fuck you. Uh, it starts off with Dwight, um, Ben Stiller's character from Dodgeball, and then uh, he's like, "You know, donate to a maze. You have a chance to win." to play in the fucking actual dodgeball game. And then Vince Vaughn, Justin Long, Ben Siller's wife, Vince Long, oh, Vince Long, Vince Vaughn's love interest from the fucking first movie, they come in. If you win, you get chosen to win. If you donate, you get to choose which side you want to play on. You get a custom average Joe's thing at the end of the game. You get a second suit that's signed and everything, or you can get the purple Cobra suit. That's cool. Um, yeah, it is pretty dope. I, don't, I only donated like $15. It's not, it's not about the money... You get like 150 chances to win. I don't care to win. I want to see. I want to see who wins, and I hope they like not televise it. But ESPN's been hinting that they will do it just for the fun of it because they released a fucking photo because the movie came out 13 years ago. They're like this year in ESPN history, fucking average Joe's beats the Purple Cobras, it's, and it says ESPN ate the Ocho on it. It was so fucking cool. So people, a lot of people are thinking, oh, are we gonna get a sequel? Uh, maybe, but if not, 
at least it's cool to see those characters back. Because uh, right. White or fucking Ben Stiller's character was really fat at the end of it. it. Took him this past like 13 years to get back into shape and not be so fucking disappointed that he lost. And it, it, there's some good story there. Like it looked yeah. like if it wasn't for a charity event, that was probably the idea for the sequel. So at least we're getting it in some shape or form. Um, I really don't have much to talk about this. Did you see the fucking the Skull and Bones open world pirate game gameplay? No. That was pretty cool. It was Unreal Engine. This is more Fallout for me 3. Good Fallout. It's like an Unreal Engine fucking pirate game. It's like the good parts from Unreal Assassin's engine Creed. 4? Yeah, the newest fucking engine. And, I don't know, I like the pirate parts in the Assassin's Creed games when you're in the ships and shit. This is it. But you actually go, you can like just stop on an island to steal a treasure and shit. It's like an open world RPG pirate action adventure or like fucking uh, so role we're playing game. This and playing. Yes, okay. and it's one of the games. It's open world, and um, when you log on and you play online, you see where everyone's at. It's like RuneScape. Everyone has oh, a physical thing. Dope. You're not just playing the game together, talking through chat. You can choose to be enemies. Friends, or there's a whole bunch of other shit on there, and I really like that because we haven't had a good. There was a game a long time. I think it did come out, but it's not what they promised. Huntsley, Huxley. It's supposed to be this online game where it's a mix of Halo. Eventually, we got Destiny from it, but you were supposed to be able, like, you could play this as like your second life, but min minus the fact that you would die from not eating. Right. So I, I want a good game like that. You can just fucking be a new person in a new world and just fucking not worry about anything. Isn't that everyone's dream? Yeah, I guess so. Um, you saw this. Uh, D Double Dog Dave posted on your wall the Mega Man Ultimate Collection. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Fucking uh, talk I, about that shit, dude. Fuck, I. You know, I love those games. I had eight. I didn't like that they went from, like, this super high graphic fucking game to fucking 8 bit again. <laughs> like <laughs> like eight -bit. The, yeah, like, 8 is amazing, and then 9 is 8 bit. Because. I like Mega Man, but you clearly know what I like from what I collect, which is oh, yeah. a lot, but... I love the X series as opposed to the original. I wish that they made a Mega Man X collection. That would be boss, and I would definitely buy that, because I've always wanted to play through all of them. That's when you can get the armors, right. the, the different weaponry, you can play at zero, all that kind of fun stuff, so... It's good shit. Yeah, but uh, the Mega Man X collection, I've actually been thinking about it. Maybe we'll pick it up and, and play a little bit. Do some gassy live or something. Fuck yeah. We haven't uh, did any classic gaming in a while, but honestly, we haven't had the time. Be lucky you're yeah. getting an episode of this. Oh, yeah. Um, fucking Marvel Spider-Man. The fucking E3 trailer. Oh, so my fucking God. good. Oh, my God. Uh, yeah. It sucks that PS4 can't truly play it on 4K, like the new Xbox console that's coming out that's $500. Yeah, they, can. they can't. Um, Only on the pro. Okay, yeah, on the on the pro. But I'm saying like us. We no, just, we can't. It's we just we can play it, but it doesn't. It's not gonna. Ha it won't be able to play on the frame rate it's supposed to play on. So it'll still look good. But dude, on the fucking new Xbox and the PS4 Pro. But they're they're saying even there's something with the Xbox. Like the only true way to get perfect flowing fucking no bullshit is the new Xbox. It's probably just paid to say that though. Oh yeah. I mean, fuck. Microsoft has. I don't know. It's, it's a big battle. You you have a pro, you're you're gonna be fine. Right. You uh, got. Don't what, let them fool you. But I'll, the pro is just a better system. It's got a higher graphics or card rating and all that kind of stuff too. So don't let all these things going around telling you that the Xbox One is the best system ever made. It's just marketing, people. I could fucking say it's not a system. That I could say that fucking the shit I just took is the best ice cream ever made, and that doesn't necessarily make it true. But I could post it everywhere, and people will go. I gotta try that man shit. That's why I think Microsoft is. I don't think we're getting any sponsors of that caliber. No, I don't think Microsoft is shit. I just think their marketing sucks. Yeah. And then um, I got another piece here, tentatively the final, but I think you can talk about it. Uh, the Shadow of the Colossus remake. What are they doing? Oh my god! I haven't even beaten that game. That looks beautifully remastered. Oh, that's amazing. It's just, uh, it looks like it's just a free free roam, and you just, it's the same exact game as it was before, so it's not like, uh... It's like when they released the Halo Combat Evolved, right. or the Resident Evil 2 Well, they HD. just did an HD remake on this, but now they're doing, like, a 4K remake. Yes. So, I mean, 
The remakes are getting a little old, but it's but, still like an fucking Kingdom game. Hearts. But we're finally getting the third. It was one. like it was like the original like PlayStation's version of uh, Legend of Zelda. Yes, Watch. yes. It made PlayStation very popular back oh, in the yeah. day. PlayStation and people have been amazing. wanting a fucking sequel for years, but just like Kingdom Hearts, well, at least we get sequels for Kingdom Hearts. All we got for that was just more and more <coughs> remakes, Gassy Radio. <coughs> Any other gaming topics to bring up? Car, mm -hmm. video game? Well, I mean, yeah, all's, all's I've been like thinking about is, like, when is that fucking... I heard that uh, Kingdom Hearts is, isn't coming out for another two years now. Two years? After they just showed more E3 footage? These fucking people, yeah. man. Two years. Like, that's... 2019. I'm eating another mint. That's... That's so... Uh, that's so fucking just... Uh. That's like teasing us. I know. They're like... It's dangling a carrot in front of your face. Stay tuned and you'll get some more. Stay tuned and you'll get some more. Man, it's like fucking that Batman v Superman teaser they gave us like two years before the movie came out and it got us all pumped for nothing. So hopefully man. all the hype is worth it. And uh, what do you say, Kermit? I say hurry the fuck up. You gotta go to the store and get some fucking shit, and then you're gonna grill some fucking dinner for your dad's birthday. And, uh, where am I? Alright. Anime. Animated. Assholes? Possibly. Oh, I think it's everything like that, and all rolled up into one fat fucking blunt. And welcome to the anime section. Luigi has a review of Digimon Try. Fucking Luigi, tell them what you're actually reviewing. Yeah, I'm, I'm reviewing the Digimon Tri movie that they made, which... Yeah, Kermit. I was a little disappointed. Um, it, it was literally just the, the first four episodes, and then they condensed it down into an hour and a half, so they pulled out almost an entire episode. So, like, there's a, there's a part where um, Tai has Greymon fighting Kawagamon, and there's all this destruction and mayhem, and then all of a sudden, the rest of the Digi Decimate. Right? Like, all you saw, like, previously was these guys in, um, that were dressed up all in black walk up to him and go, Hey, is your name? And then they would say their name, and they're like, Yeah. And then they were all, they all met up at the airport because they magically knew where he was. I was like, What the fuck? There was, there was so much that happened like they were all at a concert together all this other stuff and none of that happened fucking bastards <clears throat> but they did do a lot of setup for from uh from the previous seasons for their their friendship and everything like they're they if you can see like remnants of the past like uh ty and matt aren't getting along because they're fighting about whether they should do anything about all these evil digimon in the real world or not but I mean, it could have been a lot better than it was. Fucking A. That, ah, that's disappointing to hear that they, they did all those cuts, man. Yeah, but I'm sure that there's probably deleted scenes or something on the Blu-ray the blu or whatever. Fuck yeah, dude. And um, going into it, um, it's animated, it's comic book, it'll be digital, we'll make a movie out of it. They're going to show the origin story of John Wick in a six-part comic book special, uh -huh. limited series. And, I mean, we already know they're making the John Wick series, the the Continental. Yeah. They're talking about a fucking um, anime for John Wick now. Oh, Like dope. an actual, like how they did for Supernatural. That would be amazing Fucking for A, Wick. dude. The fucking blood and everything. Oh, been yeah. Beautifully and fucking flipping animated. around people, shooting them in the face. It's perfect for an anime. Oh, yeah. Definitely. So, look forward to that shit. Can't get enough of that. There is a Yamcha, the strongest Dragon Ball manga out in fucking Japan and Korea. And it tells the story of this little kid who was hit by a car for looking up a girl. He's looking up a girl's skirt, and she turns, and he falls in the street, gets killed by a car, but he gets reincarnated as Yamcha. I swear to God, and he can still remember being a kid. He can remember watching. It's this is licensed, fully licensed, by the way. He can remember watching the series and how Yamcha was a disappointment, and instead he makes Yamcha do the right thing. He gets super strong and everything, and it's only out in chapter two. And chapter two ends with him on fucking um, Namek fighting Frieza with Goku as Yamcha. It's fucking insane. Is he like fucking powerful yes. now? Like, yes. Like about just as strong as Goku? Yes. That's like dope. it's fucking crazy. That is fucking dope. I'm looking forward to that. Um, Dragon Ball Super English. Honestly, 
we're getting the fucking Captain Ginyu returning, switching with fucking uh, the purple guy's body, and fucking Gohan getting lasers through his body, and Piccolo sacrificed himself for going through all the shit. Uh, that part wasn't in the fucking movie. Um, Captain Ginyu returning, same voice and everything. It's cool to see it, but you know it's just filler. Yeah. To make the fucking saga and the arc longer. Then when they actually show footage from Resurrection F, it looks way better animated than the show. Oh, yeah. But, again, cool to hear. And it's just awfully convenient that the frog getting you turned into happened to be hopping around when Frieza attacked. Right. But they've been planting these new animations into the fucking show since day one, showing the frog still sticks around because he knows Bulma's the one who usually fucking they gather the Dragon Balls. Usually either at the lookout, which he can't get to, or at fucking Capsule Corp. Right. So... He followed Bulma, essentially. Right, so he can move through his body. Yep. And instead, he just did his change technique. Right after Goten fucking headbutts the guy in the balls. And the guy got super strong because he's the one who trained with Frieza to turn into gold form. Uh, he fucking, right as he's headbutting the balls, his power was down, he was defenseless, and getting you changed with him. That was funny. But Gohan, like, such a bitch getting the holes through him, and fucking Piccolo jumping in. Oh, well, we all know he's going to get redeemed later on, yep. so. I guess yep. it's okay for now. Right. Um, and holy fuck, I know we're tired of Frieza and everything, but it's like the entire budget of fucking Resurrection F was put into the episode. The next episode, Dragon Ball Z Super, the fucking Japanese dub. Frieza goes true golden form. So it looks a lot different? It looks the same, he's just shinier, and it's mastered. He can't lose it like he did against fucking Goku. Okay. He's trained that much since he's been in hell. And, um... However we left off, he starts killing the assassins from the other universe to trying to kill them. Um, this one assassin has God Key from the the other universe's, like, version of Beerus. And he goes to kill Frieza, and you think Frieza's gonna die, and you're like, oh, maybe they will bring in Cell instead. And, no. Frieza can fucking use the God Key. And he fucking kills the assassin, and then he traps Goku in the God Key. And then he makes a fucking bargain with the other universe who hasn't revealed themselves yet that he wants to join their team and there's nothing in the rule book stopping Frieza from switching universes and being on their team but even the other universes go holy fuck this guy's been resurrected on this universe this is too fucked up for us and he's captured Goku and he's going to make a deal right before Beerus and Whis arrive they fucking disappear so Beerus and Whis arrive and um, they calm down Frieza Frieza lets Goku go and then Frieza wants to duel with him it's so weird they actually go back to back. They take three steps, and the first one to land a punch can be declared the winner of their fight. And that was against Whis or no? That was Beerus? Goku versus Frieza to okay. kind of end the tension. They both hit each other at the same time. Of course. So the episode ends. Oh, I'm sorry. The stadium's finally fully built now. Instead of getting the same fucking three animation clips each time, it's actually built. We actually, you're like, oh, it's the same fucking. Oh no, they showed the top. Yay! So hopefully the next episode actually starts the full fucking arc. Not the yeah. shit leading into it, the filler arc beforehand. So that was very interesting. Um, yeah, I hit all the fucking things there. Cars 3, almost, I also have, where the hell is Cell? I would much, Cell would have made such a better... Yeah. Because he fucking didn't want to destroy the world. I mean, he was going to as a spite. He just wanted to, originally he just wanted to take it over and rule in fear. Because he has Piccolo's genes in him, who Piccolo's genes has King Piccolo's genes in him, and that's what that guy wanted to do. Cell would have been happy to be able, because he has the same pride in him, and Goku's fighting, like, oh, I just want to fight the people. So much better, but we can fucking talk about why it should have been Cell yeah. for fucking hours, but, um, moving on. Cars 3 almost had a cameo, because it's the anniversary of Tim Burton's Batman, oh, the Batmobile, but it got cut. Um. Which sucks. Um... And uh, I brought that up because the Batmobile is superhero news. Do you have any more animated news before we move on? No, I do not. Are you ready, Voltron? I forgot what the button is. Hold on. Are we ready, Voltron? Nope. <laughs> I, I don't know where the button's at. No. We're not ready. Hi, I'm Robocop Batman, and you're listening to the superhero section. Who has a feather in my ass to stop that? Look, we're waiting on the yellow lion. Is the yellow lion not connected, Voltron? Look, we're waiting on the yellow lion. It looks like it's connected, Voltron. Look, we're waiting on the yellow lion. 
You know what? We're waiting on the yellow lion. All right, he's waiting on the yellow lion. So we're in the superhero section. We just talked about the fucking uh, <laughs> Batmobile being Cars 3. Moving on. Jaden Smith released a horrible music video tribute to Batman. No shit. He's dressed as Batman and he's singing and rapping about Batman. It was some fucking trash. Dis- Will Smith needs to discipline him some more. Some more? To give him some discipline. There you go. <laughs> fucking bastards. No, um, just let him cut off his dick, then we'll all be happy. Oh my god! Um, <laughs> um, the bat signal was lit over L.A. and rested upon one of the tallest buildings in the Hollywood sector for the great, great late Adam West, and it was fucking awesome. It was his bat signal. And uh, that was really cool. Um, now here we go with the fucking bullshit again. Gail Gadot was only paid one-third of what Henry Cavill was paid in Man of Steel and one-fourth of what he was paid in Batman vs. Superman, and people are pissed. I do got to say this. She's the leading role in Wonder Woman. She was only paid $300,000. What? Henry Cavill <clears throat> and just fucking Batman vs. Superman was paid $14 million. That's kind of not fair. Up. That's like I have to agree with the fucking feminists that. Oh saying. yeah, yeah, yeah. That fourteen million dollars. I can see if she was paid ten and they're preaching. Oh, the extra four mil. Right. Okay, it's dick, a, lot that's a lot. That's a lot. Three hundred thousand dollars compared to fourteen million, and they showed everything. It's all over the fucking everywhere right now. Oh, and she's that's... gonna get more money. She's definitely gonna get more oh, money yeah. from the studio now. Like, <laughs> that's fucked up. That is very fucked up. That should not be that way. I mean, I understand that, like, just because, like, that's the way things work, girls get paid a little less than guys, but that's a, that's an, that's an absolutely tremendous amount. Yeah. There's a, there's Millions. a difference between getting paid a little less and getting paid shit. Even, like, it, would, it wouldn't it would be this big deal if he got paid, like, $3 million and she got 300000 That's even... Fourteen fucking million to right. three hundred thousand dollars, and she was the only star of that movie. Like, right, that's what I'm saying. That's really fucked. Um, I don't like that. Um, evil versions of the Dark Knight are coming to terrorize Earth this September, as DC teased early details on a series of seven one-shot comics that will tie into the upcoming Dark Knight's Metal event. Oh, that's dope. My dick's hard. You know, I like the Batman. Um. Each one-shot story spotlights a different, corrupted version of Batman spawned from the Dark Multiverse to wreak havoc on Earth, with names like the Red Death, the Murder Machine, the Dawnbreaker, the Drowned, the Merciless, the Devastator, and the Batman Who Laughs. It's pretty clear that these creatures mean business and prove just how dangerous the Dark Multiverse will be for DC's heroes, said Patrick McCollin, DC Entertainment Executive Editor. Dude, if you get those, I'm reading them. Yes, and I should also let everyone know I am out and available to... Voice your commercials with more enthusiasm and Kermit the Frog voice and my dick out while I'm doing it. As long as Jaden Smith doesn't come around with a pair of scissors. Dan- okay. Danny Elfman <laughs> is scoring. He, he, he did fucking uh, the first two Tim Burton Batman movies. Danny Elfman is going to be scoring the Justice League. That's dope. That's really cool to bring it around yeah. full circle. Um... He returns to the Batman lore. Power Rangers will be is available now on digital and will be on Blu-ray on six twenty-seven. Yeah. Awesome. And we're just waiting for that fucking steel bookcase. Mac. Thing. Bro. Hook us up, man. Hell yeah, bro. I know you listen, so hook it up. Just like you hooked up all those fucking Batman Legends little multiverse series from Arkham. Oh my god! Like, hook it up, motherfucker. You know this. <laughs> Um, no, this. The Mummy, 2017, director reveals why Brendan Fraser wasn't in it. And it's pretty obvious. His character would be too old. So I, I put in the notes. Hold up. Yeah, his if it was still in the canon, we're in present day now. Yeah, the movies were way back in the day. He would have been old. What about an ancestor? Right. Or like someone else. Or maybe something happened to him where he got stuck in time. There was a way. They did the pay tribute and reference, so it technically stood, could still be part of the series. They have the Book of the Dead from the first two movies I heard in that it. it was shit, though. It's fucking absolute garbage. That movie, literally, the fucking little short film that we made and won awards with is better than that movie. And I'm not even fucking kidding you. Uh, no Tom Cruise made it all about him. He cut out more shit involving other characters, so he would be amped up more. They got rid of too much of the mysticism. They didn't put enough comedy in there. The comedy they did have was stupid. 
They lacked any charm from the original fucking Brendan Fraser movies. They lacked any originality and flavor from the 19 fucking 20s and 30s and 40s fucking Universal Monster movies. It was just absolute trash. They totally, they did worse than DC, in my opinion, trying to establish their fucking new universe. Good. They had the fucking creature of the Black Lagoon's hand in the fucking jar, and Russell Crowe turns into fucking uh, Mr. Hyde from Jekyll, and it barely looks like he transformed. No fucking effort went into this movie. Or there was supposed to be effort, and once Tom Cruise got involved, it was just downhill from there. Yeah, Tom Cruise shouldn't be involved in anything. No. Especially not action roles anymore. He's like almost 60 at this point, and it's just dumb. Yeah. There's some people who can carry over to that. Tom Cruise, who you also need a fucking uh, milk crate to let him stand on to be tall as everybody, just can't be doing this shit anymore. No. I'm sorry. Um, truly, I'm sorry. I kept that in there because he's kind of a superhero because he does get pissed. I, I don't want to end it. I don't want to end the superhero section on the fucking uh, mummy. On the mummy. But that's what I have. <laughs> um, well, I, let's what does Voltron on. say about this? Look, we're waiting on the yellow lion. Wow. Like, what the fuck, Voltron? You're you're supposed to be here to help us and fucking. Look, we're waiting on the yellow lion. We're fucking waiting on the yellow asshole, you motherfucker. Oh, the purple. section. Mm, they brought me to the final section in there. Great. Fuck you guys. Enjoy the entertainment, assholes. Okay, uh, Voltron, would you like to speak to us, please? We're, tr we're begging you. Huck, we're waiting on the yellow lion. Okay, we're not reconnecting it because he's fucking reformed Voltron about four times now and he won't fucking shut up about yellow lion hunk. Asshole. Voltron, welcome to the fucking entertainment section. Um, we're gonna start this off with a little I'm not doing current convention for it. It was a nice show. There's cool celebrities. Chris, Chris Claremont was awesome. David Yost was okay. Great guy. Uh, all this other shit. Um, there, it was a fun show. But there was some meh things. Uh, Which we have uh, deemed code teardrop. Code teardrop. Uh, code, code teardrop. Um, well, this, this doesn't refer just to a specific situation. The no. Code Teardrop refers to any time you meet one of your big-time heroes and they just don't live up to your expectations. Right, and this isn't necessarily my story. The person did not want to be identified, and uh, we didn't want to identify the person. It was not um, any of our big guests. Yeah, it, it wasn't was... any of our smaller guests. It was just in general. Yeah. Code Teardrop started with someone being very, very picky, um, changing his mind every once in a while, left and right, and um, eventually fucking uh, making the person helping him very uncomfortable. And uh, this, this was, I remember seeing this, this was like Friday afternoon. Yeah, yeah. Way, way, way before the show started. Yeah, way before way before David Yo showed up. Way before Chris Claremont showed up. Um it was just like I I don't know. I watching this happen to someone was just like earth shattering. It was like ah, yeah. oh, I really wish this person wasn't like that because I mean he hasn't really done much. He was on he, he's that he's that, that new show that's on right now and like mm -hmm. I don't wanna like say it on everything, uh the guy had lots of energy when the show went on, and again, I'm I'm not a fan, but I'm not a, or, or I'm a fan, but I'm not a big fan anymore. Like I haven't watched this show since like the first couple seasons. Yeah, yeah um, I got you. I try picking back in, and they keep they're not exactly following the source material and all this other shit anymore. Right. And I don't know. I'm just. Things did get better, though. 
Like, uh, yeah. again, uh, David Yost was awesome. I liked seeing all his fans come up to him, including myself, and talk and all the other stuff and get um, autographs and all the fun goodies and everything. So I enjoyed having David Yost there at the show. Uh, Chris Claremont was also a pleasure. He friggin' he's a writer, so he loved talking to everybody, and that was just a pleasure seeing that. Yeah. Um, there's a cool glass blower there, uh, Loki Raven. Like he can make anything you want, and I just can't fathom how you do that with glass. I like stared yeah. into the fucking. I stared into the, the flames too long, and I, I saw like a bright light all day. There's actually a warning sign not to do so. From far away, it doesn't matter. But if you're like right there, going like this, and the fire's going. You're like you get hypnotized. Yeah. It's fucking crazy. But other than that, uh, just because we don't want to make make it the whole show long, um, we just wanted to say there was some teardrops that fell at first, everything, and then everything else became clear. Uh, Jeff Balky, if you're listening to it, chandelier. Um, I'll tell you what that means later. Okay. And um, yeah, let's let's actually move on to the fucking the actually fun entertainment shit here, dude. No, <laughs> the fun entertainment shit. <laughs> YouTube star and singer Austin Jones was oh charged with child porn in Chicago. Yeah, what he was doing was he was singing and everything, and then as soon as he'd get a DM from a girl that was underage, he would be like, send nudes. Wow. Basically. Basically, that's what was going on. So he would have them send either uh, explicit... I didn't research this. this is no, no, I, I watched this on the news. Um... <clears throat> So he got caught because he asked a girl to send him an explicit video of herself to prove how much of a fan she was. And that's how he got caught up. That's fucked up. That is very fucked up. That That's what you have to do to get caught these days. And that anybody can be misleading. Right. That's fucked up, man. Now I know how Kermit got Michael J. Yep. <laughs> yeah, you know it. Ow. Fuck. Um, but yeah, no, that's a really fucked up situation. That's not true entertainment. Here's some true entertainment for you. John Wick, besides the TV show they're getting and the fucking animated prequels, blah, 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 man. They're, it's gonna it's gonna end. They're gonna make a finite trilogy with the fucking Chapter 3. Okay. Which I think is beautiful, because it shouldn't return. Good. There shouldn't be a weird fourth one. I think anything that has more than, like, three chapters is just too much now. Right, because they can't handle it like they did back in the day. Right, like, Star Wars, it's a great trilogy and everything, but we've seen it three times. I do agree on certain aspects that, like, the fucking, like, right. so much time has passed, and I don't know, Carrie Fisher, Fisher passed, and we have more on her later, and there's just a lot of shit going on with Carrie the Star Wars. You know, out of all the shit I collect and love, I love Star Wars, but, like, yeah. But I am looking forward to fucking Episode Eight because it's going to go, it's so fucking different, the director is not a fucking pushover, lazy person who goes, oh, we're going to use that, that, and that, that, that. I don't need, he doesn't have to re-jargon anyone's memory of why we love the original Star Wars. He's just doing it, and I'm excited for that. But it's beautiful. Yeah, um, <laughs> it's going to be a true trilogy, though, for, Jack, for John Wick, and then you're going to have some prequels. So it's going to be a nice little universe. Um, <laughs> oh, my God, I didn't even know this was happening, and I love the original Flatliners. There's a fucking, the trailer that was just released for a fucking Flatliners reboot, remake. It's where, like, a group of scientists, they'll, like, fucking defib themselves to die and then they start seeing shit oh, in the other yeah, light yeah, yeah. and then they re-fucking they come back then it starts to go south for them oh yeah like and the then demons starts, and shit yeah uh, really you know I like the supernatural shit you oh, like supernatural dude, it's we good are fucking definitely movie. fucking seeing that like day one yeah so, I'm, I'm excited just I think they kind of like I don't think it's disappointing it's just I wasn't expecting that to be remade I, I think it kind of overlays two different uh, like um, points of view one don't kill yourself. No, no, no. And it's, two, don't fuck with the supernatural. No, look at it. They kind of got addicted to it. In yes. The, in, the, in the original. The, right. So when you see that in the trailer, they're kind of referencing drugs there. Yes. And then they say when you take things a little too far. Yes. You snap. So that's that's kind of where that's coming from. And plus, don't fuck with the supernatural. Yes. Because it eventually knows what you're doing, and it will use everything in its power to come through to the mortal world. Oh, yes. Just like, I don't know if you all know this, the original fucking Ouija board movie is The Exorcist. Because she was playing with the fucking Ouija board in the basement, and the demon had a fake name. Ouija boards. Don't play with them. The more no. you know. <laughs> I swear to God, dude, I was at a customer's house, and I, I was uh, I was in the basement, and I was walking Mint. through to the upstairs, and I looked over, and on the fucking table, there was sitting a Ouija board, and I was like, yep, no, oh. I'm done, and I walked out. Just 
Like, it's normal for them. I hate Like, it was just sitting on I don't the hate fucking, people like that, but I just like don't you like you can that. tell that it was a, a group of girls or something that had just been down there, like, either that night or over the weekend, like, having a sleepover and, like, contacting the other side. And they just left everything fucking out. And I looked at it, and I went, nope. Well, that's and I why walked right upstairs. Some major retailers won't sell it. I know. Because it is a fucked up... It's mm-hmm. not a toy. And they it doesn't matter it. if it was a toy. It's the fact that how it's used, spirits and demonic entities go, oh, we know what that's for. We know what we can get out of it. It's a fucking portal. It's an opening. It's a gateway. If you, but if you played with Voltron enough for fucking years and it became known as the way to communicate with the dead, it would fucking do the same thing. But the Ouija board is just too powerful now. Yeah. And, uh, yeah, that's fucked up, dude. We already mentioned this. Uh, John Wick's TV series is now being retitled The Continental. The hotels they stay in where they're not supposed to kill each other in there. They get killed. Yeah. And, so that's going to be cool. Um, it's <laughs> actually happening. August 26th, dude. Conor McGregor versus Mayweather. That's dope. A boxer versus the guy who runs his mouth too much in MMA. That's beautiful. Um, a lot of people criticize Mayweather for fucking just bouncing around in the ring and taking in shots coming in. But that's fucking that's strategy. That's yeah. boxing. MMA, you have to go in. You have to have strategy, too, but I don't know who I got on this, dude. I can't, I can't lie. I'm going to say Mayweather just because it's in his turf. It's um, his rules. Is it boxing or is it MMA? Boxing. There's going to be shit Conor McGregor can't do that he usually does. Yeah, there's going to be shit that... But do you understand this? I understand that boxers are mostly with their fists, but so are MMA fighters. Do you understand the, the amount of force that they've learned how to, like... Pull into a fist just with strategy. All he has to do is <clears throat> reposition his feet a certain way, and he can throw a three hundred pound punch right in that guy's face and break his face in half. Right. And but you gotta remember, um, Mayweather is undefeated. This is true. It's gonna be. I just think it's gonna be a good fight. I haven't rented a pay per view in a long time. Yeah, it, it all depends, dude. When is that? Because we're gonna sit down and fucking August twenty sixth. August twenty sixth. We'll, we'll sit down. And uh, I know. Watch that shit. We might be going to the, the Luis's house for it. The, the guy we filmed that for the shop. Oh fuck yeah. Um, he's gonna order it and just pitch in some beer and shit. He, he well, wants. I'll, I'll pitch in. It's gonna be fucking good, dude. Um, regardless of who you think's gonna win or who you want to win. It's two powerhouse. It's like fucking Goku versus Frieza. Yeah. But no Super Saiyan. They're all like uneven. Oh, God, I can't wait. Um, Last Man Standing was briefly uncanceled from at the country music television TV show and then recanceled by them after they bought him back because of, once again, political beliefs. That's fucked up. So any chance you had of seeing the show continue on a new network was, once again, defeated because... The producers and other people involved with the show can't keep their mouth shut, and the fucking CMT TV station was like, nah, fuck this. We don't want this attention. Wait, no. what show is this? Um, the fucking Last Man Standing with Tim Allen. Oh, yeah. Makes sense. Um, anyway, Daddy's Home 2, besides bringing in John Cena, the, the end of the first one teased, it's bringing in dads. Will Ferrell's dad is played by John Lithgow, third rock from the Sun fame, Dexter fame. Uh... And uh, Mark Wahlberg's dad is played by Mel Gibson. That's, that's beautiful. It's perfect. Yeah. It's finally, like, Mel Gibson's finally allowed back in the community. After he made that good movie last year, and, like, apologized, and he's like, I was on drugs and shit, whatever, I'm getting too old for that shit now. He's doing a reverse Carrie Fisher. Yeah, and uh, Mark Wahlberg's now in Transformers. He's doing, like, amazing now. Mm-hmm. And speaking of that, uh... Besides Daddy's Home, the two trailer being um, hilarious, fucking Mark Wahlberg is actually, he said he is done after this Transformers movie. Yeah. Apparently the actress who played his daughter in the last one recorded a message for like, the phone in the movie. Apparently his daughter is, has been killed in between the last movie and this movie. Aww. So he plays like a voicemail from her or something. But yeah, he, um, he actually said that after this he wants to stick to more comedies. And, um, yeah, he probably, wants to, he probably wants to be a little bit up, more upbeat or get his emotions out in other ways. Right. I do. Um, I love these mints. <laughs> Amazon is buying Whole Foods for $13.7 billion. Did you hear about people trying to get marijuana in Whole Foods? So Amazon might start selling marijuana. That's fucking crazy. Isn't it? <laughs> you want to know something even crazier? What's that? Sharknado 5. Global swarming what is coming fuck? out. <laughs> More. I even put in there. Why? Why? What the fuck? 
Um, <laughs> everyone in the rap community, I'm not going to talk about fucking Sharknado anymore. Everyone in the rap community is dissing the new Tupac film because it's not accurate. Uh, Will Smith, we just talked about his son, his wife, Jada Pinkett, stated that her depiction in the film was nowhere near being true. She never requested to be at his shows. She never wanted to fucking get with him or anything. I'm trying to save face because the Fresh Prince said, what the fuck? Yeah. You know this to be true. Oh, yes. Um, <sighs> Carrie Fisher's autopsy reveals that she had sleep apnea, heart issues, and she died from drugs, including cocaine, heroin, ecstasy, um, something else, I forgot the name of it, I don't care, and, a, like, three different prescriptions, including the one that she was fucking burned away and put into. Percocet urn? Oh, yeah. Percocet? Um, but we shouldn't care. We shouldn't... She always was against fighting her demons, and but she was always on it. She never fucking said otherwise. She was always open about who, who she was. Everyone loved her. So we still give her respect. It just sucks that... That's who knows if it was her coming back to Star Wars, getting back into the Hollywood scene, was that what caused her to start doing drugs again? We, we won't know. So, who's was to it, say she ever stopped? Right, who's to say she ever stopped? We'll never know, but that sucks. Um, the Big Sick trailer is fucking awesome. Um, it's the guy who... You ever seen the movie with Kevin Hart and The Rock where he's like CIA? Yeah. The guy, when the rock's stealing the airplane for him, the guy, the Indian guy who had, like, the snake in the lunchbox, he does a bunch of voices. He plays the voice of, like, the room in Adventure Time, where he's, like, the shadow, and he makes the hot tub for Jake. Okay. Um, I forgot his name. I didn't write it down. Um, he stars in the movie. He, he's an Indian guy, and, you know, all the fucking counterterrorism shit. He's like, oh, don't worry, I wasn't, I, I've been here since before 9-11. There's lots of good jokes, and it. it looks really funny. He falls in love with a white girl. Her family doesn't like him because he's Indian. His family are, is afraid of the white people because they're they're Indians in post uh, American nine eleven. But she gets cancer, um. and then her family starts to respect him because he's there for and everything. It looks really fucked up, really sad, really funny, and everyone's saying it's like one of the most original romantic comedies in years, and it really fucking speaks to people. And I smell like taco sauce and baby food. Um, but yeah, I'm looking forward to that movie. Godzilla 2 filming has started, and it confirmed that many monsters will appear, including Mothra, Gamera, or not Gamera, and um, the fucking three-headed monster, King Ghidorah. So their monster universe is kicking off. Um, I'm excited. They brought, they're bringing in a couple, they're bringing in a Familia, Familia, whatever the fuck her name is, uh, Norman Bates' mom, the chick from The Conjuring. Oh, that's cool. She's gonna be like the main character and shit. They're not bringing... Except, like, the Asian dude and the chick from Monarch are not bringing anyone else back from the first movie. Um, I'm, I'm excited for that. Yeah. And then, um, the last thing I wrote down, man, pretty harsh, but it's whatever. I'll, Josh Peck got married to his longtime fiance, doesn't invite Drake Bell, who they have been really good friends for years. Didn't even invite or let Drake Bell know, but he got married and he invited John Stamos to be his best man. And he was only on a TV show with that guy for, like, two years. Wow. Uh, yep. And I understand, you know, uh, Drake Bell had, like, public problems, you know, tabloid news, he was always in it. Josh Peck wasn't really. He lost a bunch of weight, he got himself a girl, and, uh, fucking Drake Bell said, uh, well, not invited to the wedding, the message is clear. I thought I knew you, man, and I'm gonna have to cut ties with you. Uh, I love you, brother. Like, he did, he quoted Drake and Josh. Right. Very sad. It is. But I get we don't we don't know the entire story. But right. it still sucks. <laughs> That's it. Well Voltron, what do you got to say about that? Look, we're waiting on the yellow lion. Alright. Got anything else, Luigi? <laughs> Fuck you, Voltron. Hey, you know, um I would just like to say one thing, and honestly it's gonna change everyone's lives. And I can't take it away. You've been listening to uh, uh, Gassy Radio.